Well, this is not the first time that a New Jersey governor has attracted national attention. James Florio made headlines during his term in office, tightening gun control, reducing auto insurance rates, and balancing the state budget. Governor Florio joins us right now. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, when, you, when you see Governor Christie uh, in ascendancy on the national political spectrum, what goes, what do you think? Well, it's a great opportunity for him. I mean, he's obviously uh, demonstrated a form of leadership that's brought him a high degree of fame or notoriety, depending on your perspective. Um, I think the biggest challenge for him is going to be just to reconcile the message that he wants to give out to the National Republican Party with the expectations of the state Republican Party. Do you think that, that Governor Christie, Chris Christie as you know him, is a reflection of what the National Republican Party is, or is there a disconnect uh, there? That's the challenge. I mean, he's been very good in terms of trying to stay in line with the statewide Republican Party, which is much more moderate on abortion, guns, gays, issues of that sort. Mm -hmm. But if he wants to appeal to the National Republican Party, he's got to be a little more shrill, which is going to be a difficult thing for him to do, I suspect. Well, we see um, that a lot of uh, the Republican members of Congress from this state are reportedly not going to be there at, in Tampa. Well, that's interesting. I mean, there are a number of Republican members of Congress who I know personally who are very thoughtful people, moderate people, but they've now contorted themselves into trying to appeal to the Tea Party type people, and it's um, uncomfortable for them, I'm sure. We hear reports as well. There's a printed report today that Chris Christie could have been on this ticket had he been willing to resign as governor of New Jersey to run with Mitt Romney. Would, would that surprise you if that were the case? Very much so. Very much so. I just think that um, Governor Christie would not be a very good person on the ticket as a number two person. Um, he's very spontaneous, and spontaneity is maybe not the highest qualification for running for vice president. There was a quote from Governor Kane, a man who's held in respect by both mm -hmm. parties, right. where he said, uh, he's quoted as having told one of the delegations down there during the opening uh, festivities that uh, the Democrats are a pretty party with nothing to say. That's as close to the quote as I can get. How would you respond to that? Well, I mean, this is going to be an interesting election because it offers people two different sets of values in terms of what the parties represent. Um, and I think we have got a lot to say, and the Republicans have a lot to say. Um, the governor, uh, our governor, Governor Christie, has shown a lot of leadership, um, shown a lot of uh, his ability, has the ability to be articulate um, and forceful. The question is, where does he want to lead us to? And I think that's the difference between the Democrats and Republicans. The Democrats really have a set of values that's significantly different than those of the Republicans. Do you think that New Jersey's Democrats have done their job properly in terms of when they've cooperated with this governor and when they've challenged him? Well, there's a big difference. The Republican Party, in general terms, is not enthusiastic about government to start with. So therefore, they don't feel the need to cooperate with people in the opposition because if government fails, that reinforces their message. Democrats, on the other hand, feel strongly that government is, in appropriate circumstances, a tool. And therefore, they have a commitment to try to work, even when they disagree with someone in the opposition, try to work through. So it leaves Democrats at a big disadvantage. Do you think that the Republican Party, I mean, you, you, you were criticized and it cost you a second term in office because your supporters say you bit the bullet. You took a look at a financial crisis in the state and you did what you had to do. Do you think that, do you think that either party is realistic about where we are on a fiscal, financial, economic basis right now well, and how they approach yeah, it. The answer is it's much worse than it ever was in the, he in, the, in the past. And we have a situation now where I don't know what the answer is. I mean, New Jersey's problems and the nation's problems are such that if there's no ability to reconcile different opinions of where we should go, we'll just keep marking time and have this gridlock situation. So I'm hopeful that at some point down the road, the thing becomes so forcefully, uh, tremendously difficult for people to appreciate, but then they'll have no choice. They can't ignore it anymore, essentially. Right. Uh, can you name a couple of things that the Republican Party does well? Does well? Yeah. Well, I think they, they articulate um, an, an answer to people's questions. I don't happen to agree with it. As I said before, the governor has leadership qualities, but I just have philosophic, as you would expect, philosophic differences. I mean, take health care as an example. I mean, we're the richest nation in the history of the world. We have 50 million people without health insurance. We spend more per capita than any other nation in the world. And we have infant mortality rates, particularly in our cities and our urban area, in our rural areas, that are the equivalent of third world nations. But you, you served a long time in Congress yourself. Congress, under the, a Democratic president and a Democratic 
uh, control of both houses could have addressed that issue. A well, while back that, that's too. an I, interesting observation, but it's really factually wrong because the Senate process required not just a majority. A super majority. It had to have a super majority. Right. And everything that the president has started to try to do has been held up by that, re that requirement. Right, but, but in the past, during your time in office, there were, there were opportunities. I mean, this is just something that neither party really has addressed adequately in the opinion of many. On the health care side. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's true. I mean, President Clinton had a very sophisticated health care thing, but was very naive about expecting people to be supportive. How they were going to sell it, exactly. And it was beat up. very early in his term yeah. as well. Uh, Governor Florio, we have to leave it there, but we appreciate you coming in and sharing these ideas as we get ready for the Republican convention. We hope to talk to you again as we move through the next week as well. I look forward to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.